It's not morning. It is, in fact, good afternoon. We have returned successfully from our little escapade, our little jaunt in the Blossoming Arcadia. This is not a new episode, but in fact, a half of another one. And now I'll get to talking to these blokes. Please, if you will, let me appraise as many goodies as possible. Let's see, what is new? I don't think there's much. Oh, okay, there's a little bit. Exercise, uh, the Tandem Trainer. I'm gonna start reading the name of whatever I'm looking at. Just, just to help those of you who are tabbed out and listening. Tandem Trainer. Exercise is good for many things. It not only makes us stronger, it help- it also helps us live healthier lives. So grab each of these- each of this exercise machine's handles and squeeze, as every muscle strains at the effort. Take comfort knowing you're adding good things to your life. The Sphere of Fuzzy Feelings. Put your hands on the surface of the sphere, and don't be surprised if you find yourself awash in waves of fuzzy Im imagery. The surface texture recalls the warmth of a fall sweater, the feel of grass on a summer day, and the prickly thrill of a hard-fought victory. Memory Fragment. Top. Probably? Surely there's a reason this image was broken into fragments. Could it be a treasure map? Did someone split the map into pieces and hide the bits? Is today the day I strike it rich? Ah, uh -huh, perhaps I shouldn't count my fortune before it's found. I wonder what, if any of the devs just gave a long sigh that they'd have to write 10, or sorry, 12, 12 different bits of dialogue for the same, effectively the same object. Sphere of Family. This sphere is believed to be the patron of families. Parents often implore it to help their children flourish. And who can blame them? Parents treasure their children who then treasure their own children, and on and on it goes. Such endless love is a beautiful thing. Sphere of Support. This sphere is quite unique. That is, it represents the very core, the pillar, the cent at the center of every living being. And to keep our pillars strong, this orb bids us to do one simple thing, support one another. What a message. It's one for the ages and the whole universe, in fact. And you know what they say, those who play together, stay together. Cupid's Grenade. A fruit both powerful and delicate. It reminds me of something I once read. Fate's tapestry has unraveled. Tomorrow weeps. Romance has fallen. Love is madness. To mend the rift between two cross lovers, this is the ultimate weapon in Cupid's arsenal. Beautiful. Velvety Dream Drop. This fruit is a treat for the senses. Not only is its bright, tear-shaped form pretty to look at, its soft surface is also slightly velvety to the touch. Yes, two senses delighted by one fruit. Or, as they say, two birds, one stone. Oh dear, speaking of stones, do not eat the seeds. They're quite poisonous. From its artistic, cratered exterior to its delicately sweet interior, the wayward moon is elegance in fruit, in fruit form. Wild and aromatic, it would make a wonderful gift for a friend or for someone who just needs a little pick-me-up. I'm also allergic to these! I'm allergic to all melons, but I love them and I will eat them anyway. Also, we get... Ah! That's what I thought. As evident by the puzzle piece fragments, so will uh, complete sets have their own description. Or, no, they will have a description. Oh. Aw, uh, that's kind of disappointing. Huh. Weird. I can toggle day and night for some reason. I don't know what area I'm in right now. But that's it. The spring crop series is complete. Next up... We have a lot more new treasures than I thought we did. Children mooch off of their, their parents all the time. Don't try to deny it. But to be fair, parents love to be needed. So perhaps they actually like it a bit when their child comes to them with their hand out. Anywho, this seems like a good place to store mooched items. <laughs> spouse alert. Do you have... Do you have one of those spouses who loves to play pranks on you? For example, one who gets a laugh from sneaking up and startlingly, startling you with a boo. Well, put this on your prank-pulling partner, and you'll always know when they are approaching. 
Uh, it's a must-have item for the spouse who wants to have the last laugh. I probably need one of these because of the frequency with which I accidentally scare people. I don't know why I'm so light of foot, but sometimes I just appear behind people and they don't like it. That... don't quote that out of context, please. <laughs> Wind indicator. Oh, what, a, what striking tones do play as the wind dances through the silvery treasure. The musical notes that flow from the holes announce the arrival of a breeze. And in doing so, they weave a song both sweet and melancholy. It's a sentimental soundtrack, one best suited for a full afternoon spent contemplating the passing of the seasons. I don't know if I read this. I didn't see if this one was new. Some people love to ride the rails because it reminds them of the past. Others ride the rails because they're excited about what lies in the future. I say a train trip is more than just transportation. It is unlimited possibility. Hop aboard and find out. This, this tank car works hard. It carries heavy and difficult to handle loads. Yes, it is pulled along by its superior, but it does a vital job connecting that leader to the cars behind it. It may be the middle management of rail cars, but that's nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes- oh, I, I didn't read these names. Uh, that was the middle management tank car, and then the other one was the unlimited locomotive. And now we're back at the beginning track. Sometimes in life, you lay down a track that seems straight as an arrow, but the fact is, it's not straight. Not at all. Follow that track, and you could end up right back where you started. But don't let that get you down. Maybe you're right back where you should be. This one speaks to the soul. For me. Where I am in life. Brush of Wisdom. Such a large brush could only could be used to scrub a great many things. The mind boggles at the possibilities. Of course, one should use such a powerful tool, a tool of cleansing wisely. Think carefully before you proceed. What does it what does it say on there? Toothbrush! Ah! My favorite brand of toothbrush! Toothbrush! Internal Clock Measurer. This timepiece doesn't measure the passage of time in general, but the passage of time as felt by the one holding it. The user presses the top button once per second, but how fast or slow they press it depends on what a second feels like to them. How profound. It's almost like time is relative. And that's it for schnauz. Do drop by. It's daytime. Which you know what that means and what I'm not looking at because it is day. Except for those rare instances where I can look at it during the day. Those times are truly to be treasured forever. Cheerfully. <laughs> where did we see this? Why do we have this? I don't. Where, where, where did we see this? Uh, if you find any of these busy little bouncers happily hopping about, try jumping in with them. If you do, they may just come to you for cuddles. They're such sweet little love bugs. Laying their eggs on and inside of you. Ah, the burrowing snaggeret. That enemy that we saw for two seconds and then we didn't see any more. Instead of the sky, this scaly anomaly flies to the ground. When it pops its head to the surface, the way its crown of feathers fluffs, though intended to make it more intimidating, is delightful to behold. But beware of lingering to gaze up at it, as you'll likely get the poking of a lifetime from that long, sharp beak. Bearded Amprat. Or the bearded armpit. <laughs> This little cutie has a long beard that makes it look a little curmudgeonly. But if you were to try to if you were to try brushing it, do so with caution. This dear one will well see for yourself. Move in close to get a good look. A truly shocking experience awaits you. The Memuda. Aw. Real quick, actually, before we do that. Uh zoom. How do I zoom? How do I zoom? Can I... left stick? I can't zoom? Wait, am I blind? I can't zoom, man! That stinks. Ah, so they actually have blue eyes. In other, in other Pikmin games, it looked... 
it looked like they had buttons for eyes, but that I don't think is the case. Also, what? <laughs> what? This is... <laughs> I feel really bad about this. A gentle creature removed from the fierce competition of the strong, eating the weak. It sits at gardens in a pool of sunlight, looking intent as it gazes out its big, round eyes at a plant it has raised that is just starting to sprout. Don't tease this mild manner beastie by messing with the death sprouts it's tending. <laughs> feel really bad about that. <laughs> Couple more. Puffy Blowhog. See those prominent spines upon its back? I like to imagine that it... If you looped ropes through them and hung a gondola from the ropes, you could create a living airship. How amazing it would be to travel the sky with one of these spiky sweetlings. We'd float along together wherever the wind chose to take us. We're almost to the bottom. Once we reach the bottom, it's going to be a lot more tamer, uh, like the, these segments of the episodes, because then we're going to be, you know, we're going to be... <clears throat> Just reading about what we encounter in the last day. But we have to get through a lot to get to that point. Last one. Last one of the episode, then we get to the rest of the episode. Water Dumple. Which as a kid, let's playing Skyward Sword, uh, I at one point said Water Dump Hole by accident and got very embarrassed. <laughs> this doesn't seem like a two episode dungeon. Also, why are they, are, why are they still called Dump... Dump... Dumples? What? It's like dimples. If I said something to offend anyone, I didn't mean to. I just stuttered. Anyway, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Ah, okay. oh, to be young. This odd critter lost its vision, but it evolved a very sharp sense of smell to compensate. Even if you sneak up behind it very quietly, it will still detect you. But with a mouth that opens up big and wide, approaching from the front isn't advisable either. And it's in the Grub Dog family. It is related to bull bears and bull and bull borbs. Yeah, just think about that. How could you possibly t pull yourself away from the dog butt on screen? Okay, let's let's get uh, pop drive. Yeah, you know what? For how often I use charge, I am feeling how slow it is. Let's let's make that a little bit more palatable. Brace boots. These boots intensify your legs' bracing abilities, preventing you from being blown away or sucked up by creature attacks. That seems very good. And considering we only have one captain, I would love to buy it, but I can't afford it. What else can we get? Lightning shock. A powerful lightning strike briefly immobilizes creatures. Don't worry, its design won't allow it to zap its user. And it's good that they show this with red Pikmin in the illustration to show that it doesn't damage them either. Track Trackinator. A bomb that always tracks its prey and never loses it. In the wild, I'd much rather be the chaser than the chasey. I don't like this because if the enemy runs towards me, that could I could become cornered by it. Not a big of a fan of that. But I will take some free ones. <laughs> Eager to go out on a night expedition, are you? I'm ready when you are. These areas have been approved for night expeditions. Let's see. Yeah, let's let's go to the Blossoming Arcadia. Wait, have we... We've gone to the... Okay, we've completed these. That's what the flowers represent. And then this, we haven't done anything here. We have a lot to get through. I got a lot, a lot. If we, if we want to start... If we don't want to have a bunch of these at the end, then we got to get on this. Uh, okay, let's... You know what? We went to the Blossoming, Ar Blossoming Arcadia today. Let's go back. We're going to the Fragrant Ravine. To wrap up today.
For every five glow Pikmin that propagate during night expeditions, you will get one glow seed to take back with you. Okay. Whenever I, I make an episode, I actually end up watching it three times. Uh, once, obviously, recording it. Again, in editing. And then one last time, right before I, I enter the next recording session, to kind of brush up on what I've talked about so I don't talk about the same thing twice. Uh, and then to keep some, some level of congruency between the episodes. And one thing I've noticed about this is it's remarkably simple. Uh, and at a certain point... You're incentivized to not get any more glow Pikmin because you have a big enough squad. Anything else is redundant. So I need to keep that in mind. And I also, I think, want to um, employ a different strategy than I have been. But more on that in a moment. Come in. Can you hear me? Jeff, there is a, a break between me and Jeff, which is very weird. They could have fit on one line. A while back, I taught Ochi a particularly useful skill used for operations that involve protecting a client. What? Select the luminal you want Ochi to protect, then give him a command. Oh. Ochi will patrol near the luminal and bite any creatures that come close. During a night expedition, if he gets separated from your squad, he'll go to that spot and patrol it for you. Work with him to protect the luminal. That is great advice, and I will use that immediately. Uh, oh wait, I was... I have a strategy. So, first, my strategy is, uh, I'm going to have Ochi protect the luminal. And here's my idea. I am going to start as far away from the luminal as I can, because once, once, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term, once shit hits the fan, I won't be able to, uh, get any more of the star bits, which I forget what they're called. So if I do it now, yeah, if I if I do it now, then I can uh, work with what's close rather than what's far. That makes a lot of sense, right? I, I feel like it does. I don't, or maybe I do have mines. Who's approaching? Okay, uh, bag. Let's try out one of the mines, I guess. Go. Hopefully that'll work. Come on, come on, come on. Come on! Explode! That kind of works. Okay. Neat. Good job, Ochi. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit weird using Ochi at night because my build for him really isn't conducive to nighttime, like, the, the activities that are required in the night. Because I, I made him able to be, like, he carries stuff. He, he can carry anything. He's super fast, and he can carry stuff. Which doesn't really work when the only stuff I would be carrying is tiny. Okay, 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 I need to go, uh... Switch? Switch. Okay, you have, you have... Gloman, that's good. Uh, switch back. Oh, and they teleport with you. That's dope. Get this. I can't move that closer because I don't have a ship. You're here. Kill him. Could have used the bomb. Chose not to. That's really weird. I don't like that. Okay, back. Okay, I'm almost towards the end. I'm almost towards the end of the night, so I'm almost done sprouting Gloman. Uh, can I throw them up far? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going back. You guys are distracted by this. That's good. Ochi, what is happening with you? That's fair. That's a fair assessment of his HP. Uh, switch just real quick. And I need you to get back to base. I think I think your time out in the wild is over. Glow Pikmin, get back to me. Get the charge ready. Expanded charge. Better charge. Kill him. Good. Okay. I'm not really feeling the, 
the pressure of the luminals. Hey, Jeff. I'm not really feeling, uh, feeling any pressure of the luminal being destroyed. At least not yet. I know at some point I will, but, right? Ooh, whoa, that's a posse. Sheesh. I think I can take care of it with one well-placed charge! Nice. Alright. We're doing good. We're doing fine. Uh, I'm really not that scared at the moment. Okay, maybe I should be. Oi! Oi! Die. Let's stun these guys. Just to stall for time. That's actually working well. Die. That missed. That's, this is fine. I mean, we, we got it. We got it. There are no enemies. We're, we're, we're totally fine. We're, we're fine. Ochi's okay. And we cleared it. Yeah, all right. Starting to feel the pressure a little bit, but, like, not that bad. I, I just think that as I tighten up my gameplay, I think the strategy of starting far away was good. I just need to continue doing that. Uh, I think that is correct, because as things get hectic, I can balance the gloaman I'm losing uh, by, with the stuff that's close. Amazing work tonight, as per usual. We have a glob of goo. Yummy. Now we can make the cure with the goo. I love goo. And I think tomorrow we might... We might tackle two knights tomorrow. <clears throat> Whenever we discover one of these new mechanics, be it schnauz or uh, imperfect cell or um, <laughs> eggil, uh, we we inevitably kind of have to play catch up for the time that we didn't have them. And we have an entire new area that's going to be introducing a whole new assortment of caves and whatnot. And during that time when we're in a cave, we, we're not going to be able to tackle uh, night expeditions. So I think it's wise to at least catch up on them. Maybe do, I think doing two will get us right where we need to be. My observations have led me to an important re realization. Glow Pikmin cannot die. What? What? How? What do you mean? <laughs> well, when a Glow Pikmin... Uh, meets its demise. It turns into photons and returns to the luminal. Or so it seems. Yeah. Are they really Pikmin then? I didn't notice that, but I suppose that makes sense. My numbers rarely go down. That's kind of terrifying. Are we going to be turning this entire planet into glow Pikmin? Will it be overrun at night? Will the ecosystem be destroyed by a, a glow Pikmin genocide across all living creatures? Eh, I don't know. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Let's just blindly <laughs> trudging forward. See you tomorrow!